What is your name, please? My name is Adrian Katarzy. My name is Adrian Katarzy. My name is Adrian Katarzy. Only one of these people is the real Adrian Katarzy. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Phyllis Newman, Robert Hugh Lewis, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Truth. Brought to you this week by Dristan Decongestant Tablets. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, evening Bud. Bud. Always nice to know I'm going to spend a while with you. Incidentally, Robert Q is leaving tomorrow for Hollywood, I think. Start work on a movie. Good Neighbor Sam will be watching for it, Bud. Jack Lemon picture. Best Thank of you. good luck. All right. Please open your envelopes, if you will, please, panel, and follow along with me as I read. I, Adrian Catarzi, am a liberal arts major at Florida State University. By maintaining a good average in my regular subjects, I am privileged to take a rather unusual course, circus. Florida State is the only university in the country with a large-scale student circus complete with its own big top. In the circus, I am part of a juggling act, but I get my real fun out of working out on the flying trapeze. After hundreds of unsuccessful attempts, I finally performed a feat which has been accomplished by only 12 other people in the past 100 years. I became the first amateur and probably the youngest person, man or woman, to perform the triple somersault in midair. Signed, Adrian Catarsi. These three persons all claim to be Adrian Catarzi, college circus star. We start the questioning with Phyllis Newman. Phyllis? Thank you, Bud. Um, number three, could you tell me the technical name for those long things you have on your legs? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the one I usually wear in circus tights, but I don't know where they dug these up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Number one, do you know the name of those tights that are thin and that dancers and circus performers use? Did you um, have on? Dan skin or Thank you. Something like that. Number two, where is Florida State University? It's in Tallahassee. Number two, this uh, curriculum of circus, does that count towards your degree? Well, you can only take it for a half a credit one semester, and then after that, it's just an extracurricular activity. I see. Thank you. Robert Q. Number three, do you agree that uh, Florida State University is in Tallahassee? Yes, sir, I do. Number one, uh, not too long ago, as I recall, and I'm delighted to say that I don't remember Mr. or Miss Katarzy, uh, was there not a television program which featured your university? Yes, there was. Number two, on what network was that? It was on CBS. Number three, uh, were you part of that program? Yes, sir, I was. Number one, what is the most famous circus trapeze act at this point? Let us say, put it this way, in history, in contemporary history. Uh, the most famous trapeze act are probably the Flying Cancellos. Uh, number two, uh, have there been any unfortunate incidents with the Flying Cancellos recently? No, there haven't. <laughs> number three, uh, when you... Kitty. Uh, number three, what else do you take in, in school except uh, circus? Uh, the circus just counts one credit. I take a liberal arts course. Uh, number two, do you know what those things are called that you're wearing? Are, are they dug up from someplace else or are those <laughs> yeah. your own? Well, they're leotards. Leotards. Number one, is this a triple uh, somersault that you do ever performed by women? Uh, yes. Number uh, two, can you tell me who Lillian Lightfoot was? Yes, she worked on the Roman rings. Thank you. Number three, who are the Wallenders? Wallenders? They're a very famous team that works on the high wire. Very famous for many reasons. Tom. Gee, they, they, these really are fantastic. <laughs> the, uh, I will ask one. I know what technical thing that maybe I can find out something. Number one, do you know what spotting is if you're on a high board, for instance? Spotting? Yeah. Uh, standing there in case the person falls to catch them. Well, that... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, how about this, number two? There was a family of trampoline experts uh, that was uh, working out there in, in Sarasota, not in uh, Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that family? The trampoline performers. 
No, I don't. Do you know number three? No, sir, I don't. Number one, have you heard of this family? Sorry to say, that's all the time we have. It's time for you now to mark your ballot, so please do so at once, without change and no consultation, as you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I don't think he's the one, but I liked him. <laughs> no, I, uh, Phyllis. Well, I voted for number one also. Number three looks so right with his big muscles, and number two with the dress. Little, one is a little puny, excuse me, but I bet he's the one. Thanks, <laughs> puny. Robert Q. I don't know. I voted for number two. I, uh, I, 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 I just like her. <laughs> <laughs> and Kitty, what is your choice? I voted for number two. I like the way she got off the trapeze, and I think a woman could do such a thing, and so I voted for number two. Well, that's even Stephen then, huh? Two for one, two for two, and with that we move into the charm circle, as we like to call it sometimes, when we learn which one of these persons actually is the college circus star. So, will the real Adrian Catarzi please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Good to be happy to meet you later and show you how puny he is. I'm <laughs> fatter than he is. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Brooke Wayne and I'm an editorial assistant at Time magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Raymond Chase. I'm a Lance Corporal in the United States Marine Corps. I'm stationed at Floyd Bennett Field as a parachute rigger. <laughs> for you because we're fortunate in having a slow motion film of Adrian actually performing the triple somersault. Want to see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, watch your mind. the poor man is skinny. <laughs> wow. He cheers a lot of him every week. Mm. Well, it's been a great joy having you with us. I hope you've had the fun that you brought to us. And of course, you know the score with two incorrect votes out of $250 each. Watch your eyes brighten now. That's $500 coming your way from Dristan and the gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thank you very much. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs> now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Buddy Bond. My name is Buddy Bond. My name is Buddy Bond. And will you follow along, please, with your copies as I read from mine on this one? I, Buddy Bond, am a folk singer. Two years ago, I packed my rucksack, threw my guitar over my shoulder, and embarked on a trip around the world. I sang my songs for such personages as the Maharaja of Sanpur, Pablo Picasso, and King Bhumipal of Thailand, who played his saxophone while I strummed my guitar. Faithful to the traditions of the wandering minstrels, I never used any money to pay for food, lodging, or transportation. Except for a flight from the United States to England, I sang for my breakfast, lunch, and supper through 45 countries on five continents. Signed, Buddy Bond. <laughs> Three gentlemen all claim to be Buddy Bond, 20th century wandering minstrel. Let's start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number two, do you read music? No. You don't. Uh, number three, can you tell me where Picasso lives? 
No, I can't. I saw him in Aix-en-Provence. Ah, number one, did you see Picasso in Aix-en-Provence? Yes, I did. Uh, number one, can you tell me the name of Queen uh, of Thailand, Fumi Ball's wife? Uh, she, 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 cat. Sitter cat. I never could pronounce it. I probably Number two, it. how did you travel? I hitchhiked mostly and sang for my supper, lodging, and transportation. Number three, how did you manage to meet all these people? Tom Poston introduced <laughs> Tom. Thank you. Number three, do you know Lightning Hawkins? I know the name. I believe he's a jazz guitarist. Thank you. Do you know him, number two? Um, Yes, sir. It's Lightning Hopkins. Hopkins, thank you. I happen to know it's Lightning Hopkins. Thank you, number three. Uh, number two, who makes the best guitar in France? Uh, possibly Jake's Camerat. Uh, thank you. Number one, who do you think makes the best guitar in France? Um, I don't know about French guitars. Thank you. Tell it. Thank you. Uh, number one, is Buddy Bone your real name? I don't mean, I mean, if you're not lying. It's Buddy Bond. Name. Buddy Bond. Yes, it is. I see. Uh, number three, um, where did you learn how to play the guitar? I learned it in school. I had an uncle that played the guitar, and I took a course in school with Thank him. you. Number three, on sheet music, there are notations where guitar... I don't guitar read sheet music. I don't read I didn't think all. you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, who's Bob Dylan? Oh, he's a uh, famous uh, composer of folk songs. Number two, there's a very popular folk song now that has to do with the wind. Can you tell me the title of that? It's in the wind. Number three, do you agree with that? No, I don't. It's What's blown in the wind. And who has the big record of that number three? Peter, Paul, and Mary. Thank you. Robert Q. I've been expecting you all, all along, and one of them would say, I'd like to answer that question, but first let me sing a little song. <laughs> number one, what kind of uh, folk tunes did you do in Europe? Well, it depended on... I, were they English, American, uh, European? Uh, American mostly, but it depended on who I was singing to and what language they understood, although sometimes that didn't make any difference. Number two, uh, how did you manage to get to Europe from America? Was there some foundation that helped you? Or? Well, as it says in the affidavit, I, uh, was, that was the only place where I paid for the transportation. Did any, uh, number three, was there anybody who helped you on this kind of uh, expedition? Yeah, various people that I sang for. Number one, you... That's all the time we have. So, again as before, will you use the rest of the few seconds remaining to mark your ballots? At once, in other words, without change, no consultation permitted as usual, as you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Now they are. Everybody, all right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I, th I think I voted for number one. <laughs> I won't be definite until after they reveal themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis, what is your choice? Well, I, I think it's number one also, but number three got me by correcting Tom, so I voted for number three. But I think it's number one. Robert Q? Well, I, I'm always wrong. You see, I, I was sure it was number three. And my next choice is number one. So I voted for number two. <laughs> Going down the Knowing middle. you. <laughs> <laughs> and Kitty? I voted for number two. Because number three knew marvelous answers. Number one looks like a folk, folk singer, but number one's voice had a very resonant quality. Number, number one's two. voice. Number two's. Oh, I that's see. what I voted for. All right. <laughs> you see, clearly the reasons are given. That's why it's always so lucid when we get to this point. Sneaking up on the circle of truth, we find out now which one of these gentlemen actually is the 20th century wandering minstrel. Will the real Buddy Bond please come out here and sing for us? I'm going to sing you a song about a C.D. bewhiskered character who helped build America. His name was Dan Tucker. Hey, get out of the way for old Dan Tucker. Too late to get his supper. Supper's over, dinner's cooking. Old Dan Tucker just stand there looking. 
I went to town the other night to hear a noise and see a fight. All the people they's jumping around, so the old Aunt Tucker's to come to town. Hey, get out of the way for old Aunt Tucker. Too late to get his supper. Supper's over, dinner's cooking. Old Aunt Tucker just stand there looking. Old Aunt Tucker's a fine old man who washed his face in a frying pan, combed his hair with a wagon wheel, died of a toothpick in his heel. Hey, get out of the way for old Aunt Tucker. Too late to get his supper. Supper's over, dinner's cooking. Old Aunt Tucker just stand there looking. Thank you very much, buddy. From that sample, we know you never went hungry, no matter where you went. Thank you. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name's William Blood, and I'm the originator of the Rainbow Theater, a theater on wheels. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is John Reynolds, and I design, import, and sell Japanese umbrellas. <laughs> If you had as much fun as we did, then your evening was well worthwhile, plus the fact it's even more worthwhile when you realize that there were two incorrect votes at $250 each. That's a nice fat total of $500 from Dristan. And, of course, when you weigh out a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thank you for being with us. Hope you had as fun. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> Panel, if I can have your attention, please, before we meet our next team of challengers, I have some information for you. Every program of To Tell the Truth for the past, oh, two years and more, three men have sat out in the back of our studio audience here watching the proceedings. They are our standby team of challengers. Now, if ever something should happen to prevent our using our scheduled team of challengers, they were ready to step in at a moment's notice and uh, substitute to be the team. You are going to meet one of those gentlemen right now. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Harold Ray. My name is Harold Ray. My name is Harold Ray. Now, panel, please follow along as I read, if you will. I, Harold Ray, am part of a very unusual team. Two other gentlemen and I have attended every program of To Tell the Truth since December of 1960, about 120 shows. I am a member of a standby team of challengers. My team stands ready in case any unforeseen emergency forces a cancellation of one of the scheduled spots. If that should happen, my teammates and I would step into the breach and face the panel's questions. Naturally, our team consists of one real person and two imposters. I am one of the imposters. Someday in the future, my team may finally face the panel on the program, and because of this, I cannot show my face. Incidentally, before the panel starts questioning, I must warn them that there is one question I am forbidden to answer. Signed, Harold Ray. Very well, panel. These three gentlemen all claim to be Harold Ray, imposter on our standby team of challengers. <laughs> we'll start this round with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, 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 tell me, uh, number two, uh, you don't have anything to do with this mm. panel, do you? You're, you're going to be what you are now, I guess. Number two, is that right? Uh, I don't understand you. Me either. <laughs> uh, number three, I presume that the question you're not allowed to answer is what your category is when you're working, is that right? That is correct, sir. Uh, why don't you want to tell us? <laughs> I just can't. That's the one okay. question I can't. Uh, how come you all look so much alike? Tell it. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, uh, can we ask you what the person's name is who would be the thin no? That's another question. Well, so that makes I two could questions. tell you, but I would have to whisper. You'd have to whisper. <laughs> I'm curious. What? No, he'd have to whisper. He's not me. Number two, do you get paid every week? Yeah. You do? Number three, do you get paid every week? I do. How much do you get paid? Are you allowed to tell? I can't say. I see. That's a true question. <laughs> I'm going to find out a dozen. Ah. Number one, do you know Polly Bergen's husband's name? Not her husband's name. Oh, I thought you just might hang around the show. Robert Q. <laughs> well, I don't know. I 
I've heard of the man in the gray flannel suit. Here are the men in the gray flannel faces. <laughs> Number three, uh, has to tell the truth always uh, in these past two years been broadcast from this theater? Uh, was that the Mansfield Theater when I started working? Okay, number one, what is the name of the director of this program? Uh, Paul Alter. What does he do, number one? <laughs> <He's> the... <laughs> number two, number two, who is the producer of this program? Uh, Mr. Fritz. Mr. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Mr. Fritz. M Mr. Free. Yes. <laughs> Number three, who is Bruno Zerato Jr. and what capacity would you put him in? Uh, why? <laughs> who? Uh, what does he do for to tell the truth? He's the associate producer. Uh huh. Number one, uh, uh, Kitty. Uh, Number three, you've been watching this show for a great many uh, performances. How do you like it? I, <laughs> I like it a great deal. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, um, how does it feel to finally, after all this time, be sitting in that spot? Number well, it's one. very uh, exciting. You like very it? Very exciting. Very You'd much. like to be doing it more. And that's yeah. all the time we have, but I hope you've had fun with this one up to this point, because now I'm going to ask you to vote, if you will, please. Mark your ballots right now for the one you think is the real one, of course. And without consultation, vote for number one. Number two. <laughs> Or number three. Have we all marked? Quickly? Hey, that's real good. Tom, for whom? I, I voted for number three, bud. And uh, I've, I've been asked not to make any more remarks. Because <laughs> they, they told me that only two of the fellas had on those masks. <laughs> <laughs> who, to who told you that, Mr. Freed? No, yeah, no. <laughs> Phyllis. Well, I voted for number three because I could tell by his eyes he wasn't lying. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Q. I was going to say his expression gave him away, but uh, while, Mr., while number two did uh, pronounce our producer's name perfectly well, I still think it's number three. <laughs> Kitty, what is your choice? Well, I voted for number three. Oh. I have the feeling that oh, when they take just... off their masks, Not we're going to know Morgan all again. three of them. <laughs> and number three knew more about the show than anybody else, so in all justice, I had to vote for him. Well, that's a rare Not thing. Not Henry haven't... Morgan again. <laughs> <laughs> die. <You're... laughs> You have, in quite a while, you haven't voted unanimity uh, this way on the nighttime show. Let's see what we do with this one. And go into the charm circle and learn now which one of these gentlemen actually is the real, real imposter on our standby team of challengers. So will the real oh, yeah. Harold Ray please stand up? <laughs> And now, number two, who are you? Well, I'm William Blood, and I'm still the designer of the Rainbow Theater. <laughs> hey, those guys were great mice. <laughs> and that's still John Reynolds, of course. They were both in the last spot. And <laughs> Would they sing really? for us? I told, you, I told you only two of them had masks on. <laughs> Oh, boy, well, that was a great job of fooling. Believe me, that was fun, and I hope you had as much of a kick out of it as we did. I don't have to tell you, it was unanimous. That means there were four incorrect, and that's $1,000 coming your way from Dristan, as well as the gift package of the fine products of the makers of Dristan. Yeah, I mean, Thanks so much face, for Harold? helping us in our little fun to see. Good night, and God bless you. Okay, panel, rest easy now. Let's look at this brief. Before we say goodnight, we have one more surprise for you. Oh, no, oh, no. no. Harold Ray has joined his two real teammates, and we'd like you to meet the entire team of standby challenges that you may meet someday. got the whole future laid out for you. It'll be a cinch when you finally come down to it, provided uh, Mr. Freitz, our producer, doesn't change the way in which it's produced. Tom, thank you. 
Phyllis, thank you. Robert Q, thank you. And Kitty, thank you. You're just sensational people to work with, and thanks for the fun. Good night to you. Good night, good night to all of you. See you again next week, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon in the daytime panel. In the meantime, I say good night to you from Dristan and remind you once again to tell the truth. Good night. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Thompson production. Miss Newman's Gown by Bill Smith. been brought to you by new Easy Off Window Spray. Now with ammonia. Keep your windows sunshine clean. New Easy Off Window Spray with ammonia. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded. <laughs>